Hello everyone. Today in dermatology lectures, I'm going to talk about sweet syndrome, which is also known as acute febrile neutrophilic dermatosis. Please subscribe to my channel. If you're watching my video for the first time, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon for the notifications. Neutrophilic dermatoses are auto-inflammatory conditions often associated with systemic disease. In 1964, Dr. Robert Douglas Sweet from Plymouth, England first described acute febrile neutrophilic dermatosis, and it is named as Sweet syndrome or Sweet disease. Acute febrile neutrophilic dermatosis is an uncommon skin condition characterized by fever and inflamed or blistered skin and mucosal lesions. Initially, it was known as gom button disease. Sweet syndrome is an uncommon disease with a worldwide distribution, but the disorder appear to be more frequent in Japan. The average age of onset is 30 to 60 years, most often occurs in the middle-aged woman, but men, children rarely, and the elderly may also be affected. Acute febrile neutrophilic dermatosis may affect previously healthy individuals, but often arises in the context of an acute systemic infection or an underlying chronic condition. In response to any infection, as neutrophils or inflammatory cells, they migrate at the site of infection or injury. They become activated and kill the invading microorganisms by phagocytosis. But in the absence of an identifiable local infection, when neutrophils suddenly accumulate and become activated and release cytoplasmic granules, which lead to the injury of the normal tissue. Neutrophilic dermatosis, including those seen in the setting of auto-inflammatory neutrophilic dermatosis include Sweet syndrome, pyoderma gangrenosum, and Bashid's disease. Both Sweet syndrome and pyoderma gangrenosum can be mostly idiopathic, but patients may have associated underlying diseases, for example, hematologic malignancies and inflammatory bowel disease. Occasionally, these neutrophilic disorders are triggered by medications. The exact cause of Sweet syndrome is unknown. It has to be found to be more common in individuals carrying the genetic marker HLA-B54. The association with underlying diseases suggests a hypersensitivity reaction. Immune complexes including excess cytokines via hypersensitivity reactions and cytokine dysregulations interleukin-136 and tumor necrotic factor TNF-alpha play a role. In many patients presenting with Sweet syndrome, no underlying condition is found, but it may follow sun exposure, upper respiratory tract infections, inflammatory bowel diseases, that is ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus erythematosus, and relapsing polychondritis, blood disorders including leukemia. Internal cancers usually of bowel, genitourinary organ, or breast pregnancy, gastrointestinal infection, for example, compilobacter, vaccinations, drugs including azathioprine, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications, antibiotics, TNF-alpha inhibitors, carbamazepine, and several others, and immunodeficiency. Sweet syndrome or acute febrile neutrophilic dermatosis may include few or all of the following symptoms. High or moderate fever, tiredness and malice, skin lesions, sore eyes or mouth ulcers, aching joints, headache. Sometimes other organs are affected, including bones, nervous system, kidneys, intestines, liver, heart, lung, muscles and spleen. Skin lesions of Sweet syndrome may be few in number or numerous. They are characteristically tender and may be extremely painful. They persist for days to weeks. The limbs and the neck are the most commonly affected sites. But other areas of the skin and the mucosa may be involved. In some patients, they arise only in the sun-exposed areas. 
Sweet syndrome lesions may have a range of appearances, which may include small papules or vesicles, larger thickened or swollen plaques or nodules, pseudovesicular blisters, annular lesions, erosions, and ulcers resembling atypical pyoderma gangrenosum. Acute febrile neutrophilic dermatosis often causes erosions or ulcers inside the mouth, on the tongue, or on the lips. Ocular acute febrile neutrophilic dermatosis presents as a sore, red, sticky eye. It can lead to ulcerations and loss of vision due to conjunctivitis, decruedinitis, keratitis, scleritis, iritis, uveitis, glaucoma, or choroiditis. On the basis of clinical presentation and extent of the disease, Sweet syndrome can be classified into three subcategories. That is subcutaneous acute febrile neutrophilic dermatosis, neutrophilic dermatosis of the hands, and histiocytoid sweet syndrome. Subcutaneous neutrophilic dermatosis is a form of paniculitis. It is also called subcutaneous sweet syndrome and characterized by deep, painful nodules and plaques. Skin lesions may ulcerate and discharge oily material. These may develop on any area of a skin. Systemic symptoms include fever, malice, and joint pains. There is an association with myelite dysplastic syndromes. And the biopsy shows lobular infiltration of neutrophils in the subcutaneous fat without, ves uh, without vasculitis. Neutrophilic dermatosis of the hands is characterized by a localized variant in which there are purplish nodules on the back of the thumb, fingers, and hands, or less often on palmar surfaces. Histiocytoid sweet syndrome. It was first described in 2005. In this form of acute febrile neutrophilic dermatosis, instead of neutrophils, inflammation is associated with immature myelite cell infiltration on biopsy. The name arises from the similar appearance of these monocytic cells to histiocytes. It is difficult to distinguish from leukemia cutis. The skin lesions in histiocytoid sweet syndrome typically include uh, multiple red, purplish, or brownish oval shaped patches, plaques, or nodules. The rash may be persistent but may improve with successful treatment of the underlying disease or withdrawal of causative medications. Histiocytoid sweet syndrome has been reported in myelodysplastic syndrome, myeloproliferative disorders including leukemia, multiple myeloma, cryofibrinogenemia, pseudotumor myxoma lymphocyte, predominant Hodgkin lymphoma, and rheumatoid arthritis. Acute febrile neutrophilic dermatosis may be diagnosed clinically, but at times it may be difficult to distinguish from infections such as chickenpox or inflammatory conditions such as vasculitis. The diagnosis is usually confirmed on skin biopsy. The diagnostic criteria for classic acute febrile neutrophilic dermatosis includes major criteria and minor criteria. In major criteria, it is abrupt onset of tender or painful red or purplish plaques or nodules. And the biopsy shows inflammation that is composed mainly of the neutrophils without le leukocytoclastic vasculitis. Minor criteria includes preceding fever or infection, Accompanying fever, painful joints, conjunctivitis or underlying hematological or visceral malignancies, inflammatory disease or pregnancy or preceded by upper respiratory tract infection or vaccination, raised white cell count on blood testing, improvement and excellent response to systemic steroids and not with the antibiotics. Three of the following four features may be present that is ESR greater than 20, CRP positive, leukocytes greater than 8,000, neutrophils greater than 70%.
Occasionally, acute febrile neutrophilic dermatosis is the presenting sign of the serious blood condition. A full blood count may reveal raised or reduced numbers of red cells, white cells, or platelets. Further investigation may require bone marrow examination. Histopathologic features depends upon the type of the cutaneous lesion. Diagnostic histopathologic features of acute febrile neutrophilic dermatosis are numerous polynuclear neutrophilic inflammatory cells associated with broken up neutrophils, that is leukocytoclasia and endothelial swelling. True vasculitis may occur in severe cases. Sometimes the dermal infiltrate may extend into the subcutis, creating a septal or less frequently a lobular paniculitis. Usually epidermal changes are not significant, but neutrophils sometimes invade the epidermis, producing subcorneal pustules. They may also infiltrate the adenexa. There can be epidermal spongiosis if significant edema is present. Three histologic variants of sweet syndrome have been recognized, that is histocytoid, lymphocytic, and eosinophilic. In this picture, hematoxyl hematoxylin and eosin stained section shows a superficial and deep perivascular and interstitial infiltrate of numerous neutrophils with scattered lymphocytes and plasma cells. There is marked papillary dermal edema, many extravasated erythrocytes and focal spongiosis of the overlying epidermis. No vasculitic changes are noted. Treatment of acute febrile neutrophilic dermatosis usually results in rapid in improvement in the symptoms. Usually systemic steroids such as prednisolone are prescribed in the doses of 30 to 60 milligrams daily. Within a few days, the fever, skin lesions, and other symptoms clear up. However, lower doses of corticosteroids are often required for several weeks to months to prevent relapse. Several other medications may be tried when systemic corticosteroids are ineffective or contraindicated, which include topical corticosteroids, intralesional corticosteroids, colchicine, potassium iodide solution, dapsone, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, cyclosporin, other biologic agents, minocycline, mycophenolate, clofazimine, thalidomide. In some cases, acute febrile neutrophilic dermatosis is very resistant to treatment. This is all for today. Thank you everyone. Kindly subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon for the notifications. Keep watching Skin Doctor for you.